Divine smile on you, friend. Don't... Skyrim is a beautiful game. Exactly seven years ago, to this day, I loaded it for the first time and explored the lands with the greatest character I've ever made. Odgrub the Basher. Oh, I loved that man. He and I, we have so many good memories together. With him, I beat the guilds. He beat the guards. He beat innocent people. And it was with him that I mastered something that makes the game ridiculously easy. Last month, I talked about games with scaling levels, mentioning Skyrim in particular. The enemies in this game will try to match your level so that the game forever remains a challenge. But there's something that I discovered with Odgrub that made him more powerful than the game could have prepared for. It's all too easy to focus on the cool stuff, like levelling up your armour and mastering the blade. So much so, in fact, that you may fail to dabble with stuff like smithing, or enchanting, or alchemy. After all, who wants to crush plants when you could instead be doing this? But this land is ours, and we'll see it white. Okay, focus, Old Grub. For these three skills, hold a secret. A terrible secret. A terribly brilliant secret. For master these three, and they will make you a god. I'm going to show you how Old Grub did it, back in 2011. I mean, don't ask me how he thought it up. It's not like he's the smartest soul in Skyrim. Meet my new character imaginatively known as Odgrub II. He has just spent countless hours grinding smithing, alchemy and enchanting, and they're all, finally, maxed out at level 100. First, I needed a full set of armour. Did you know that with a high enough smithing skill, you can make any set of armour the maximum armour value? This means that even boring old hide armour can get just as good as legendary heavy dragon plate armour. But hide doesn't look very bling. So I first set about getting a full set of heavy dragon armour, just like Odkrup had, all those years ago. For this I needed dragon parts. Now this should have been easy, since Skyrim is littered with dragons. Until you need them, it seems. I couldn't believe it. I'd been drowning in dragons when I didn't need them. I had grown tired of having to eat so much dragon soup. These oversized cliff racers had single-handedly caused global warming. They had been everywhere, until I needed them. Now they seemed as dead as the dinosaur. Stupid game. At this rate, I... And then I found them. All of them. Everywhere. Epic fights later, I had enough dragon stuff to make some really cool shit out of. And Lydia was more than happy to carry it all back to town for me. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Now, I know that this video has already shown a bit of killing and that you guys must be getting bored with all that mindless violence by now. But it's important to see how good Odgra of the Second is before he exploits the game. That way, when we show it at the end, then you'll see how much of a difference all this exploiting has made. You know, for science. Doing. Even in plain old orc armour and weapons, he's already pretty good, taking on all of the city's guards at once and holding his own against them. But something about this lacks the oomph that a legendary hero should have. He has to resort to cheap tricks, whereas I want people to see him in combat and to be literally blown away. And figuratively. Time to make that bling set of armour. He got his dragon parts back from Lydia. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Then, using these, Odgrub crafted himself a full set of dragon plate armour. And it made him look absolutely fabulous. And then he set out to make it even better. How? 
I'm glad you asked. You see, with the 100 smithing, you can improve the armor, but you can get even better at smithing if you first enchant clothing with Fortify Smithing Magic. But you can also enchant clothing to make you better at alchemy, and then you can wear those as you use alchemy to make even better potions to improve your smithing even further. You then equip the clothing and drink these potions, and then smith items up to a godly level. Of course, this is simplifying things a bit, because you can also make potions to make you better at enchanting, and then use those to enchant your clothing that makes you better at alchemy, creating an infinite loop, improving your abilities to oblivion and beyond, thus ending back in Skyrim again. And that's exactly what Ogreb did. He then headed over to his smithing station, donned his clothes of improved smithing, found his potion of improved smithing, then quickly worked on improving as many items of armour as he could before the potions wore off. He even had time to do it with his weapons as well. Doing all this upped his armour rating to a stonking great 963, which is well beyond Skyrim's maximum armour level, and his weapons now also dealt triple the amount of damage that they would have previously. As you can imagine, Ogreb II is now truly formidable, his stats unrivalled. But not so fast. Before we test out how great he is, there's one more step that we need. This may actually be a good time to explain why Ogreb the Basher, despite his name, chooses to wield a one-handed sword as opposed to, say, an axe or a massive great warhammer. It's simple, really. For when it comes to beating people off, size isn't everything. People make the mistake of grabbing the shaft of the largest weapon they can find, thinking that using two hands is better than one. But they're mistaken. I have found that, with enough practicing technique, grasping your sword with just one hand can yield better results. Especially if you can still finish the enemy in one thrust. Keeping one hand free, you remain nimble, dodging enemy blows and opening up cracks in their defence, catching them with their pants down and letting you slide your sword right in where they least expect it. They never see it coming. Now to enchant Odgrub's weapons and armour. Each item can improve Odgrub in one way, be it more health, strength or so on. This alone is useful, but if you unlock this skill, each item can improve Odgrub in two ways. Use this on all his armour and weapons and he will become an unstoppable killing machine. And that's exactly what he did, all under the influence of his potent Improve Enchanting Potions. Choosing enchantments isn't an exact science. He chose to prioritise attack strength, followed by making him stronger or more resistant to shock spells. Odgrub's had one too many bad experiences with conjurers. This enchanting stage alone must have doubled or tripled Odgrub's power. As for enchanting his weapons, Odgrub was spoilt for choice. He could choose to absorb his enemy's health, or to set them on fire, or to paralyse them, or make them fear him and run away, or to paralyse them and make them fear him and try to run away, or he could just steal their soul. There was something Odgrub liked about it, absorbing just one point of health, like the ultimate humiliation just before their doom. Plus the enchantment gave the weapon a really pretty red glow. But ultimately, one point of damage was a waste of an enchantment. He also toyed with paralysing them and making them fear him at the same time. It didn't always work, but when it did they'd hilariously flop to the ground screaming. It also seemed to break the unkillable characters, who would either remain on the floor or who would just stand there with a silly look on their face for the duration of the effect. Not a dumb. Ah! But sadly, these two effects combined drained the enchantment too quickly, so to improve his weapon's battery life he settled for just one second of paralysing doesn't always kick in, but when it does it really puts the laughter into slaughter. I can still put up a fight. <laughs> With armour and weapons fully pumped out and this video quickly approaching the 9 minute mark, you might be tempted to click off right now. I hear 3 clicks Phillips just posted something really dang on Twitter. Probably. But if you were to check this out, then you'd miss Oddgrub making some really pretty jewellery, which can also be enchanted for extra hacks. Any old jewellery would work perfectly well, but as you probably guessed, for Oddgrub, any old jewellery isn't bling enough. He wants the best, and that's gold with diamonds. And so began perhaps the longest and most pointless leg of his journey so far. Oddgrub set off on his adventure. The journey there would be long and treacherous. He braved moor and mountain, field and frostroll, and traversed the most dangerous mountain passes that Skyrim had to offer for there's only one place that he can get such precious jewellery. Only one that could live up to Oddgrub's demands. And that's Radiant Raymond, the finest clothes shop in all of Skyrim. 
It also sells pretty and rare pieces of jewellery. A regular favourite for Oddgrub, even if its owners aren't the friendliest. If anywhere was to sell gold with diamonds stuck to it, it would be here. The problem was, their shop had broken in some way and remained locked, when it should have been open. This normally happens when the owner gets lost and dies in some horrible way, but Aldrup swears he had nothing to do with this. So he did what any respectable person would have done, and broke in. The owner was in there, alive and well, but Oddgrub was told to leave. You're not supposed to be in here. I'm not going to warn you again. Not wanting to squander his only chance to get the finest jewellery, he did as he was told. He tried waiting a while to see if that would fix the game. You're not supposed to be in here. But the shop remained off limits, and a random guy was now in charge of it for some reason. I'm going to warn you again. You are not supposed to be in here. So Oddgrub was all like, screw it, and went down the local for a pint. Incredibly, this worked, and when he returned, the clothes shop was open for business again. Oh, take a look. But they didn't have what Ogre was looking for. Finally. Time for plan B. He ran to the other end of Skyrim on his most boring journey yet. He was attacked by bandits, orcs, thieves, wolves, bears, trolls, giants, and a dragon along the way. He could have just fast travelled, but he was part of the hate crowd back in the day and still stubbornly refuses to use it, even though secretly he's beginning to see the benefits. Finally, and 22 gigabytes of 4K footage later, he arrived at Riften, the city of thieves. I find your hand in my pocket. I'm going to cut it off. What he needed was locked away in a house that you're not supposed to be able to access until later in the game. But fortunately, seven years on and a thousand releases later, Skyrim is still a buggy mess, and Ogrub was able to glitch his way in. He and Lydia proved to be a good team. Oddgrub would bash them, and Lydia would set them on fire, or simply bash them herself. Oddgrub found the hidden passages and triggered the traps, and Lydia carried his burdens. Eventually, he reached the room with the diamond in. Oddgrub got what he wanted. Now on to one of the only gold mines in Skyrim. Even the formidable Briarheart equipped with the shock spells, his previous weakness, failed to hurt Ogrub in the slightest. He tore through the bandit like a butter through knife hot and collected as much gold as he could eat. Armed with gold and diamonds, he returned to civilization to craft himself some jewellery. Although once he got there, he realised that Lydia had been wearing the bling jewellery that he had wanted all along. God knows how long she's had that stuff for. Finally, Ogrub enchanted them. His Necklace of Doom and Ring of Power were made, and once equipped, Oddgrub II was finally complete. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Oddgrub II, at full power and in its final form. He and Lydia tore up the castle at Windhelm. His bow was perfect in the villages around Solitude. He moved onto the castle, where the stairs complemented his sword of paralysing nicely. It wasn't a good day for Skyrim. On to Whiterun next, and his bow proved itself again on the steps leading to the castle. Those who were invincible soon wished they weren't, but this was all a bit easy. So we moved on to the dragons, killing regular ones in three arrows, and ancient epic no scope 360 ones in just three blows of his sword. He went to take on the Greybeards. And although it's not possible to kill them, I think it's safe to say that Oddgrub won.
In fact, nothing was a challenge anymore. Oddgrub II had made the game too easy. The illusion of Skyrim had been ruined. And on that disappointment, 